Hello everyone and a very happy Friday to you all. We're well into autumn or fall, whatever you prefer to call it now, and the clocks are going back this weekend, in the UK at least. I don't know if that is true in other countries that you may be watching from, but if you're watching from the UK, don't forget to put your clocks back this weekend. Very important. Um, the good thing about modern technology is most of those clocks go back by themselves these days. There's very few that you actually have to physically change anymore, so... There you go. Anyway, that's not what this video is all about. It's good to see you again. Please don't forget to hit that subscribe button. You know the drill by now. You can hit subscribe. You can give me a thumbs up. You can become a member by hitting the join button, as many of you already have. And I thank you for your support. So what are we going to be talking about on this video today? Well, I wanted to share with you a little bit about Microsoft Entra Conditional Access. Now, I've done a lot of videos on Conditional Access already, and in terms of the the, uh, actions that those policies can take. One of the most common ones is to require MFA. That's brilliant. But more recently, in case you're not aware of it, there's a newer feature uh, within conditional access. It's called authentication strengths. And you can get it a lot more granular with the type of second factor uh, authentication that you want to apply when enforcing a conditional access policy. So we're going to take a little look at authentication strengths in Microsoft Entra conditional access policies. Here it comes. So what are authentication strengths in relation to conditional access? Well, let's just uh, recap a little bit about how conditional access works uh, with regards to multi-factor authentication. So we're in the Entra admin center here at entra.microsoft.com, logged in with the, hopefully for yourselves as well, the appropriate uh, administrator with just enough uh, access, just in time privileges as well. And if we go to conditional access, there we go, we've got that open. Let's now close that side panel to give us a better view. And if we look into our existing policies, uh, we can pick on one of these. Now let's have a little look at uh, require MFA uh, when risky sign-ins are detected as an example. Doesn't really matter which one we pick on. And we can see what the, the conditions are for this conditional access policy. So um, what this policy is doing is uh, it's targeting all users and it's excluding um, a number of directory roles and a particular user or, or group could be excluded as well. This should always include your emergency access or break glass accounts, which should be appropriately named, appropriately passworded with complex passwords, which are broken up and stored in separate locations, ideally. But I digress, that's another story. So we've got that, we've got our targeted resources, it's targeted to all cloud apps. Again, you could be more granular here, you could uh, select specific apps. What are the conditions? Have we got any conditions here? We've got a sign-in risk in, in this case, where um, we're controlling the user access to respond to specific sign-in risk levels. So high and medium are selected there in this particular example. Then we get to our access controls, which is the area that I'm uh, interested in, uh, to be honest. So what we're doing here is we are requiring multi-factor authentication. And as the description shows us here, the user must complete additional security requirements like phone call or text. Um, not the best examples there, really. If anything, that should be highlighting the Microsoft Authenticator app or, um, or maybe it's FIDO2 as the preferred options, but never mind. But what it's telling us here is to consider testing the new require authentication strength. We can learn more, and I think we will. Let's open that in a new tab. Let's have a very quick look at the description for this. So well, Microsoft Ignite's coming up soon. All you lucky people who are getting to go to Seattle. Um, okay, but authentication strength. It's a conditional access control that allows administrators to specify which combination of authentication methods can be used to access a resource. For example, they can make 
only phishing-resistant authentication methods available to access a sensitive resource. But to access a non-sensitive resource, they can allow less secure multi-factor authentication combinations, such as password plus a text message. So this is really cool. Let's see how it works when we select these. So um, let's, for example, pretend that I want to change this. I'll untick require multi-factor authentication. I'll go for require authentication uh, strength here. And it's giving me a little warning that I've already anticipated. It's telling me that require authentication strength cannot be used with require multi-factor authentication. <laughs> I've already unticked it, so um, there you go. All right, require authentication strength. And we've got that little description there. Users must use specific authentication methods based on the authentication strength policies applied. So here we go. Well, before we drop down, let's see what this uh, message here is. To enable all authentication strengths, configure cross-tenant access settings to accept claims coming from Microsoft Entra tenants for external users. Authentication strengths will only configure second factor authentication for external users. Interesting, okay. But what have we got in here at the moment anyway? We've got three in here at the moment. So we've got multi-factor authentication, which uh, has combinations of methods that satisfy strong authentication, such as password plus SMS. We've also got passwordless MFA, passwordless methods that satisfy strong authentication, such as Microsoft Authenticator. And we've got phishing-resistant MFA as well, phishing-resistant passwordless methods for the strongest authentication, such as FIDO2 security keys. So we could select one of these uh, and then um, as per normal, we could require some of these other controls if we if we want to or need them to, to be in place. And then we can select to require all the selected controls or require one of the selected controls. So, so that's where you select that authentication strength specifically in terms of granting um, the, the access in the access controls of the conditional access policy. I'm not gonna actually change that because I don't really need to, but it's just really to show you how you would do it. But what we will do is we'll just go back to policies. And in our side menu here, we can see that we have authentication strengths here. Uh, and we can see the three that we have in place. Now, if I okayed that policy and, uh, and changed it, we would have seen the link policy here, but I've not done that just yet. But we can see here that we've got our multi-factor authentication, uh, our passwordless MFA, and our phishing resistant MFA. And it's telling us the type of authentication methods that are associated with that strength. So let's take a look at, let's take a look at passwordless MFA and see what that looks like. So we've got the, in the name and the type, the description, high assurance authentication strength that includes methods with cryptographic keys, for example, a FIDO2 security key. Authentication flows, we've got Windows Hello for Business or FIDO2 security key or certificate-based authentication, multi-factor, or Microsoft Authenticator phone sign-in. Cool. Phishing resistant, let's see how that compares. Uh, we've got our name and description again, uh, which is include authentication methods that are phishing resistant, like FIDO2 and Windows Hello for Business. So these are things that you actually are or actually have. You've got your FIDO2 security key, or you've got your biometrics with Windows Hello for Business. So the flows are Windows Hello for Business or FIDO2 security key or certificate-based authentication multi-factor. Awesome. Awesome. Now we can add uh, a new authentication strength, and there are, the last time I checked, I'll soon find out, there are four in total that are built into conditional access. I've got three of them active here already, and these are uh, multi-factor um, authentication types. If we click on here, we can add a new authentication strength. We can give that a name, a description, and we can search authentication combinations. Now, I'm going to close down these drop downs just to give you a, a better view of the four key types. And as I say, we've already got three of them added in. So we've got phishing resistant MFA, we've got passwordless MFA, and we've got multi-factor authentication. There's also single factor authentication available. 
which I've not added in. So let's have a look at each of these in turn, starting with phishing resistant MFA, which includes Windows Hello for Business, FIDO2 security key, uh, advanced options included that you can configure. Let's um, take a wee look in there and uh, have a look at what that involves. So enter a list of authenticator attestation GUIDs, AA GUIDs, that can be used to satisfy this authentication strength. Security keys with AA GUIDs not in this list will not be usable to satisfy this authentication strength. That's brilliant. You can take that a step further and enter the specific FIDO key AA GUID. Wonderful stuff. Okay, uh, back into new authentication strength. Uh, and I, I wish it wouldn't expand that by default when you go into it. So there we go. So Windows Hello for Business, FIDO2 security key, certificate based authentication, and you can tick and select those and add the, so you can add combinations of these to create the authentication strength in a custom way that you need, which is brilliant. Fantastic stuff. So that's phishing resistant. Let's have a look at passwordless MFA. So that includes the Microsoft Authenticator, um, which hopefully you're all familiar with. And it's a really, really great app. And uh, for passwordless, it's, um, it, it's, it's brilliant, absolutely brilliant. So that's passwordless MFA. For multi-factor authentication, we've got a lot of options in here that we can select. We've got our temporary access pass one-time use, multi-use. I did a video on temporary access pass very recently. You can check that out in my playlist. We've got password plus Microsoft Authenticator push notification. We've got password plus software OAuth token and hardware OAuth token, password plus SMS, password plus voice. Federated multi-factor, federated single factor, plus Microsoft Authenticator with push notification, and so on and so on and so on. So there are a lot of choices within the multi-factor authentication, 13 in total to be precise. And then finally, we've got our single factor authentication here options as well, which include certificate-based authentication, single factor, we've got SMS, password, and federated single factor. Now these are obviously gonna be less secure options than the uh, than the three other types, um, especially SMS, which more and more is being discouraged now, um, and rightly so for the reasons that uh, SIM card cloning and uh, SMS uh, intercept capabilities from malicious actors are uh, becoming more and more prevalent. Um, it's probably still a minimal risk, but it's a risk nonetheless, and you need to be aware of that. So. If you can avoid SMS as your form of secondary authentication, um, then absolutely do so in favor of those um, more stringent methodologies. So that's it in a nutshell. That's absolutely brilliant. I encourage you to check it out. Let me know if you're already using it, if you've had any experience with it, if you've had any pitfalls with it, any challenges, let me know in the comments. So there you go. And that's it everyone, thank you so much. I'm sure you'll agree that authentication strengths are very, very powerful and can be uh, widely and sensibly adopted when using conditional access. Uh, let me know, as I've already said in the video, if you've been using these already, any uh, experience that you've had, I love to hear from you and uh, I appreciate your comments always very, very much. So. That's it, I'm gonna wind up the video. Please hit the subscribe button. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Leave me some comments. I'm always happy to hear from you. Thank you to my wonderful members and my subscribers. I appreciate you all so much. Take care, have a great weekend, and I'll see you all soon. Bye-bye.